so interesting not to hear Erica Badu sing Child of, with the Blues because this is the director's cut. So it was before Eric had written the song um, with Curtis Mayfield and Terrence Blanchard that, that eventually went on the end of the release cut. Well, welcome to Boston. Thank you. And welcome back. I know. Thank you. This is funny. So Casey and I were talking in the car, and there are two different versions of this film. There's the director's cut, and there's the Criterion version. And we had no idea which one it was. Um, well, the Lionsgate, so, so the first version was Trimark and the Lionsgate, oh, right. that was the release version. Uh, Criterion actually released both versions, the director's cut and the release version. And so this is, I'm happy that, that's it. That it's this cut, because this is the cut you want. Um, so we're gonna have a little conversation, and then we're gonna open it up to the audience. You, we can bring up the lights, because I'm feeling a little. Ah, there we go. Hello, beautiful people. Um, so let's just talk a little bit about this film. It's I just 25 years, um, 26 years. Almost 26. Almost 26 years. Um, and it still holds up so beautifully. It is such a beautiful film. It really, it really is. Um, from the acting, from the cinematography to the music. Um, but I'm, I'm wondering what you, what do you, what would you have done differently now that you look at it 25 years later? Well, Nothing. Um, this is one of those that came out pretty much the way that I wanted it. I mean, especially being able to have the director's cut. You know, if I didn't, if I wasn't able to have the director's cut, then I would say, well, there was a director's cut. <laughs> you know, there, there was another cut that I liked very much as well because I like both cuts. Um, but, but being able to have the director's cut and having just the enormous honor and privilege of having both released on Criterion, you know, I, um, I don't know that I could have asked for anything more. I mean, in order to make a movie um, that really works, you need so many things to go right. It's like everything has to go right. Um, the cast and crew has to be perfect. Everything uh, has to be perfect or great or, or at least, um, you know, really everybody bring their A game. And then it needs pixie dust. And honestly, this had pixie dust. Um, all of them, most of the people that worked on it, you know, became famous. And, um, in, you know, everybody, in Terrence Blanchard, I mean, all of them, the girls, and, you know. Yeah. Um, so it's it's just one of those films that um, I, I can't, um, I have to drop the mic on that one. I know. <laughs> I mean, it's it like, this is your first film. Yeah. This it like, all came together with this cast. Like, I mean, we were talking about that earlier, about finding cast we just finished. I want to dance with somebody. Shot it all here in Boston. Well, <laughs> local talent, local talent. We're, we're looking at local talent. Um, you, it is pixie dust because you hit the mark on this film incredibly with everybody who's in it. And um, how, how did you go about? How did you go about finding them? This was like a student, almost a student film. In a sense, well, afterwards, and I mean, um, I had a, a studio. We, you know, we'd taken hundreds of meetings, and everybody said no. Yeah. People yeah. admired it. They didn't understand it. They didn't think um, it had. You know, they didn't think it represented black people versus white people. Of course, they didn't think it represented black people. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is 1997. This is what was happening. You talk about was, everyone wanted urban drama. Yeah. Um, and so it was. Um, it was kind of a miracle that it got made. But one of the miracles was the way the cast came together. Mm. Um, Sam Jackson, I made a short film that was kind of, now we call it proof of concept for East Bayou, that was called Dr. Hugo, and um, which starred my husband, Greg, yeah, who yeah. hasn't married to him yet, Bonnie Curtis Hall, as the sexy doctor. <laughs> and um, you know, Victoria Rell kind of playing the part she plays in, in the film. And, and you know, Sam Jackson, who really was a character actor at the time, you know, fabulous actor. Um, but it was Pulp Fiction, and he, he really hadn't done a romantic kind of lead, and he wanted to play that doctor, you know, and so Sam came on board. And then our early table readings, uh, you know, Megan was Eve. Megan was Eve, and then she grew out of playing Eve. Right. And then one day I saw her, and I was like, oh my God, she's Sicily. You know, she's, she's Sicily yeah. just like overnight. She was um, Sicily. And so then the search was on to find the Eve because Megan was actually a very good Eve. And I, um, I auditioned all these kids and I couldn't, they were precocious, you know, like cute and, you know, precocious and perky. And I, I was um, appalled. <laughs> 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 I was like, oh, 
a god, you know. Um, but I started to feel like I was perpetuating this this um, crime because we were in we were prepping in Louisiana, and I had a crew there, and I had actors to have to rehearse, and I didn't have any meat, and it was um, it, it started to make me feel an incredible imposter syndrome. Oh, yeah. And then um, one day, my casting director Jackie Brown called me and said, "Come back to LA. I think I found her." And I went in, and it was just this magical kismet moment. Um, have it not talk to me too. Actors are never just available to read, right. you know, with somebody coming in at the last minute. But Sam was there, Megan was there, and and, and Journey came in, and um, I, I watched her, and I was like, whatever I'm looking for, <laughs> you have it. This is it. Like I couldn't articulate it well, but it's in this this little girl, this young woman, and and um. I was blown away. I was so blown away that I became very, very emotional. I had to leave the room. And I left the room and I took a little walk down the hall and sitting on a bench was this little boy and he looked just like me. I'm like, we're here. I'll take you out too. Can you come with me? And I had an improvise together and I had a book. Oh my God. I mean, it's that's like that aha moment. They are incredible. Incredible. And then, um, then Diane Carroll. Um, that Did she say, oh, I want to be in it too? No. <laughs> I, I knew she wouldn't. Yeah. So because, you know, it's kind of a strange part. Yeah. Um, but I called her up and it was one of those things like, I have to say the exact right thing to Diane Carroll. But I did. I said, I stood in the aisles and then snuck into the theater and then snuck into the back seat and then asked for a job as an usher to see you in Agnes of God. I saw her play the psychiatrist in Agnes of God and I saw it many times. I think if I had said, I love Julia. <laughs> I love Julia. <laughs> Julia. Julia's my favorite show. Yeah, me, me too. But, like, I, you know, but, I, but I said Agnes of God, which was something she, you saw me in Agnes of God. Oh, I said, I said, yeah, I did many times. I saw you and that is just um, a purest performance. I just thought you were very sweet. You know, totally appeal to that. Yeah, but, but it's true because you saw her in something other than other every, than all the rest of the world had else. seen her. Yes. So but. then she said, "Well, who did you get to play Eve?" And I said, um, "This young girl named Jerry Small." She said, "I know Jerry Small." She said, "She's a spooky little girl." <laughs> <laughs> That's a quality. That's a quality. She's a spooky little girl. Does she spooky. know that Diane Carroll said that? Yeah, I've told the story many times. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> so, yeah, no, And I would say that, I'd say that I'm looking for a very earthy girl with like kind of an otherworldly yeah, quality. Edge. But the spooky little, there was something just slightly just spooky about her that was upright for the um, part. Wow, I mean that's, it, it, it's incredible. But so how has Eve's Bayou inspired your work since then? Oh, I don't know. Well, I mean you do Cave Man's God, so it's this, you were you were in this period of this like magical realism. Oh no, that's just me. Yeah, <laughs> I know. So, but that's what I mean. So then you did cavemans, and then you yeah, that's me. I mean, right. I'm very much that way. So it, so so for instance, um, you know, when I realized that Harriet Tubman talked to God, I was mm -hmm. like, okay, I can. Oh, I that's my way in. You know, that and that's just me. So um, so when I when I'm not doing that, I'm some movie that movie one of my favorite movies that I've made is Talk to Me. And oh, it's not that oh, at all. But has everyone seen that? You haven't seen Talk to Me. It's one of my favorite pieces of movies. It really is. Me too, but right. that, that's like outside of my, of my kind of um, this other thing that, that I feel very, very plugged into. So then who are your influences? Because you were definitely influenced by that piece, that magical realism, and then this other, you know, Talk to Me, um, you know, the other work that you did. Yeah, I mean, um, Bergman and Hitchcock, mm -hmm. but also Tony, I mean, Tony Morrison was, you know, yeah. The goddess I pray to, you, right? I mean, that was my that's my patron saint, right? <laughs> and um, and and the the magic realist, you know, um, South and Central America, you know, and and Gabriel Garcia Marquez, mm -hmm. um, and you know those writers, Borges, you know, those writers really, really, really influenced me. As did Southern novelists and playwrights. As did To Kill a Mockingbird. 
you know. Right. And so that I have many, many influences. Um, it's yeah. sort of that like Southern Gothic. You're not from the South. You're not. I'm from the South. Are you? Well, no. uh, by way of St. Louis, Missouri. Same as oh. Missouri, but my, my entire family going back to the slave boats from Alabama, my wow. entire family. How do I know that? I knew the roots. Yes, that's um, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, um, but yeah, my entire family is from Alabama, so I, I think of myself as very Southern. My family is very, very Southern. Um, so when you said about these bio, uh, un you made the film because you wanted to unapologetically depict black people as incredibly beautiful. Well, I tried to reflect the way that my parents and their friends looked to me when I was a child. They were very glamorous. I mean, very, very glamorous. And um, and I can't hide pictures to prove it. You know what I mean? It wasn't just yeah. it wasn't just my point of view, though. My point of view was, was important as all of ours are as children. You know, they were um, very, very glamorous and messy. You know, <laughs> they were a little messy. You know, they would get they would get drunk and they would be a little messy, but they were very beautiful, and that was. I don't know, it was a kind of an important perspective that I didn't see in movies, I just didn't see it. You know, everybody was like, you know, either sweaty and noble or, you know, or like in the hood with guns, and I just right. didn't see it. But I, I mean, it's, I mean, but that was like generational. Yeah, yeah. Right, our grandparent, my grandparent, it was, they were, they, everybody had the, their pocketbooks matched their shoes, yes. and, and their hair was perfect, and they were, they, they drank beautifully. It yeah. wasn't like they were, it just like they sipped there, and it was this whole yeah, period of just, in lovely um, respect and love for family. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I think that that comes through, sort of comes through a lot of your books. You're, you're a big reader. Yes. And how does that influence the work that you do? Um, I'm, I, I think it influences me a lot. I mean, I think, like I said, I was influenced so much by what I was reading. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think it's also how I relax and how I recharge. And, Introverted, you know, and say I, I spend a lot of energy being, you know, extroverted. Um, but, but I, it's how I reach. I read like a couple of books a week. Mm -hmm. um, it's really how I read. Yeah. So, um, I just yeah, I'm not a big reader, but I love. I do like books. Um, so let me ask you, you you went behind the camera. Mm -hmm. You had a promising career as an actress. See, see. Decent, um, Spike Lee's uh, School Days, yes. um, and we all know Hannibal Lecter in Science of the Lambs. And so, what made you say, "I don't want to be in front of the camera anymore. I want to, I want to, I want to direct. I want to." Well, it was my first love. Like it was my, it was my first love. It was a very, very, very serious love. Um, but I was a very serious actor. Mm -hmm. You know, very, very serious method actress and. Um, you know, actor studio, you know, um, I was a guest observer, I'd pass my, I was in the finalist round of auditions and I would um, watch these fabulous actors you see and study and, um, you know, I, I did Shakespeare and I was off Broadway and I took it very, very seriously. But, you know, movies and televisions, like Black Girl Next Door, Black Girl Best Friend, and uh, there wasn't a lot of opportunity for me to get off in the way that I needed to artistically. And so at a certain point I started to become, um, very frustrated, you know, very, very frustrated. And I, I realized I had more to let loose, you know. Mm -hmm. And I was in therapy at the time, you know, and, and um, dealing with, you know, some family issues. Mm -hmm. And um, my, my therapist said, you know, you really need to write that story because apparently I pitched it to him. <laughs> and, um, what, this story? Oh, this story. While you were in therapy? Yeah. <laughs> and so, therapy um, works. Therapy works. So, <laughs> so I took, um, yeah, it was pilot season. You know, we used to have pilot seasons, now it's kind of all year round. Yeah. But, um, but when I was acting, it was pilot season, and um, he said, why don't you take this pilot season off and write that story down? Wow. And so I did. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. And so now it's an elaborate conversation. Yes. What, what, what is that like? I mean, yeah, exactly. <laughs> And I can't even imagine what that. Did, did you ever think that that this film that you made would would be in that space? Never. I mean, I, I never, never. And um, I gotta say, it's one of the things I'm most proud of, you know, in my professional life. I mean, it was a huge moment for me. It was huge, huge. I was floating on air for you know oh, oh, like a couple of years. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was 2017. I mean, it was, it was a huge, huge honor. 
it's incredible to think that, you know, your, the career that you have and are continuing to have and the choices that you're making and the movies that you're making. Can you talk a little bit about, about that, of sort of like your trajectory from East Bayou to now doing the Whitney Houston film? What's sort of, you know, because of the magical realism, is there, is there another piece coming in that? Oh, well, yeah, there's another piece. <laughs> I know you can't write it now. We all know we yeah. can't write anything these days. Um, but, but yeah, then, no, no, for sure. I'm gonna keep, um, and it's not a biopic. <laughs> <laughs> I've done three of them. Um, they're great, but you know, uh, yeah, I'm kind of getting back toward, you know, into my own writing, into mm -hmm. my own imagination. Um, and yeah, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. And so, can you just tell? So, so you went, so you went from East by to these other things. Did this? Was there a, were there, you have to make these choices to do that, and so yeah, were there any? A lot of choices, yeah. and um, I probably could be a lot wealthier if I made different choices, honestly, you know what I mean? Um, but I, I have to say, I did what I wanted to mm -hmm. do. You know, I never really did a job I didn't want to do, and um, and I did a lot of things I wanted to do. At the time, it was like, oh, I'm interested in that. I, I, you know, I think I can wrap my head around that, and I think maybe I could, I could direct that, you know? And, so I did what I want. I've done what I wanted to do. That's what I'll say. I've done what I wanted to do. Um, it's been. Um, I, I couldn't have imagined the path, and it's definitely not a straight line. It's kind of like you know. Uh, but that's been my whole career. I couldn't have dreamed of of the path. You know, it's been. Yeah, it's what comes to you and what you're interested in. Yeah. Um, and when you did Madison J. Walker and you did Harriet and then you did Whitney Houston, there's pieces of that where you're, you know you're making choices how to present those particular characters in the way that when you talk about these by you as unapologetic mm -hmm. um, and wanting us to see these women in different ways. Um, so can you just talk a little bit about why that's important, especially these women, I mean, a lot of these films are really about, you know, empowering women or seeing women, black women as really heroes. I think that um, to truly see somebody as a hero and to truly see, see them, to recognize and empower them, you have to understand that they're human. Mm -hmm. And so the, the messiness, honestly, has always been something that, that appealed to me because um, most human beings live in the gray area between, um, you know, heroic and, and, you know, and vile. <laughs> you know, it's just kind of the way we are and why I think maybe we're God's favorite creature, I don't know. But I mean, I think that that would interest me, mm -hmm. you know, so I, in order for me, for, to me, in order for you to really appreciate what Whitney did, you have to understand that she was human and what she was pushing against and what was, um, what she truly struggled with. And so that's, that's the way I've approached by the area was hard because she was kind of perfect. Right. right? <laughs> so, yeah, so, that, that, so that, that was hard, but, um, but she, she did something that most people thought was pretty crazy, which is, that, you know, she, she had these seizures where she fell out and she talked to God, you know. Um, and, and so, but that was the hardest one for me because she was kind of perfect. There wasn't, there wasn't all the messiness wow. that I could find in these other real people. That was, it's very easy to find because it was there. Yeah, um, and then that of C.J. Walker as well. Finding that. Yeah, well, you know, a uh, workaholic related. <laughs> <laughs> she was a workaholic. She gave everything. She gave everything. You know, she, she, um, she really, really was driven. And uh, yeah, so I could find some kinship in her. I mean, I always wanted to tell that story right. since I first heard of really? you know, CJ Walker. Yeah, 20 years before. <laughs> 20 years before. So when it came up and Nicole, my friend, was, was going to write it, you know, and she was like, Do you want to come on board? I was like, Hell yeah. Like, you know, I love this story. It's, it's incredible. And that's a series, so can you talk a little bit about, you know, it seems like everything's going towards series, right? Whether it's a limited series or, you know, whether it's over, you know, five seasons or whatever, but it seems like the, the industry is going in that direction. Um, but, you know, movies are still so very important. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think, look, I, I think I'm old-fashioned in a million ways, <laughs> um, but I love you know, narrative, three-act structure, feature. I just think it's it's just my jam. It's like what I like to do. But that being said, um, you know, I've come to really appreciate long form and, and what you can do in long form. And I, uh, as a consumer, I love it. You know, um, like yeah, you know, the bear season two. Like <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> I'm there. We're talking about all the shows that we the actress. 
just trying to, um, you know, I mean, it's, uh, it's great, um, but I think in React structure feature, it's just the way that I, that I'm most comfortable with. Yeah, that you think that you just mine things in that direction. So use by 35, um, beautiful, you know, you, you can't replace 35 millimeter, you just really can't. But we're in a different age, we're in, we're, technology is different, we're in the digital age. And um, so how are you adjusting to that sort of change? Well, I'm trying to find the beauty in it. Um, I think it's fundamentally different. There's there's silver in film. Mm -hmm. It's different than zeros and ones, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. it's, it's just different. However, um, on Harriet, when you're shooting um, night exteriors in the woods, uh, you know, there's nothing like digital, right? I mean, it's, it's just right. made it possible for me to capture that. It honestly made it possible. We wouldn't have been able to get it. We wouldn't have been able to um, do it on the schedule that we had. We ran through that schedule. We would not have been able to do that without digital. Lighting and yeah. Lighting yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. I mean, I think, yeah, I think it's the way in which we're moving. I, I hope to um, shoot another film on film, and I'm very proud to teach at a film school that teaches film. No. And uh, NYU grad film, and you know I. I mean, you're an incredible inspiration to many, you know, actors, actresses, filmmakers, um, and the work that you do. And you've been teaching for a really long time. And we were talking on the way up about how people are like clamoring to get into Casey's class, and of course they are, as it too. Um, so I want to open it up to, to the audience for questions. Uh, Lots of them, I'm sure. So, Andrea, and then Daniel, and then the back. So, um, of course, I, you know, I've forgotten almost um, how fabulous a film can be. I'm watching this, I'm thinking, wow, I've been watching a lot of like mediocre films. <laughs> you know, and you get used to it after a while. Because I'm watching this and just the, the, the set deck, the, the nuances of all the actors and, and the the hair, the, the everything, the, the, the story, everything has texture. so much texture and nuance and beauty to it. But um, not at all my question. The question is, um, are you thinking at some point of writing a role for yourself, you know, for acting? Because now you can do exactly what you want to do. You can give yourself the perfect challenging role. Are you thinking of doing that? You know, I've always loved acting, the art of acting. Like I said, it was my first love. I've got to say, I love actors and acting more, directing actors than I did acting. I love actors. And, you know, I wrote Eve's By You for me to get older enough to play Moselle. You know, but when I look at Debbie Morgan, it's like, I wouldn't have it any other way. There's an, a, you know, I, if I didn't think there was anybody better, I would do it because I didn't think there was anybody better, but there's so many fabulous actors, you know. And and I love I love the art of of playing with actors. It's 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 my happy place. That's what brings me joy. similar and part of it's changed. I think that um, it, it, with Eve's Bayou, I definitely, it was prose and it painted images almost. Mm -hmm. It was like every frame was a Rembrandt, right? And I made the actors stand exactly in, you know, where I wanted them to stand in front of the windows. And um, it was like everything was a painting and every word was um, Shakespeare. I mean, it really was. I mean, Eve's Bayou is like, you know, they had to say it the way I wrote it. And I, that's changed. I've loosened up a bit, and I've learned to really love a moving camera. Um, not not so much of the stately images. That's that's become not how I work. I really love a moving camera because of the freedom it gives the actors, and because of the surprise in catching things. You know um, that that um, the way that it involves the the personality and the um, spontaneity of the DP and the actors together, and that out. I've learned to really, so that's, I would say, the biggest difference. Um, of the, the, the things that, have, that are stayed the same, it's my intense preparation because I have an anxiety disorder and, and um, I'm most calm if I'm utterly, utterly prepared. So I, I you know, everything is prepped out. Everything is prepped out. Yeah. 
And then, and that allows for you to be spontaneous. Yeah. as well as having lunch with Tony Morrison. That was really, uh, you know, she kind of dissed me, but that was a okay. <laughs> oh, While she was having lunch with you? <laughs> did she like just get up and leave? Or did no, she, she just, um, you know, she, she didn't think I was quite ready to take on a novel that I wanted oh. to take on. Um, but she, I was, I was just blown away. She's my hero and I was just um, completely blown away by her. And, and that was a very memorable conversation. Well, no, Beloved, she definitely said I wasn't ready to do, so I didn't even get a meeting with her. No, I wanted to do love. Mm -hmm. I wanted to do love, um, you know? There are daddy issues, there's a ghost. I'm like, come oh, in, there are sisters, you know? That's your jam. Yeah, yeah, that was my jam, and, and I wanted to do love, and she, um, I don't think she thought I was ready to do that. To, to, to at my own writing. I can tell you like the, the things that are in front of me, once an adaptation, once an adaptation, but um, but yeah, I'd still love to do some Tony, you know? Um, I don't know, maybe she'd still disappear. <laughs> I don't know. Um, in terms of how I sustain myself, I have a family and that was really, really important. In terms of keeping me grounded and making me um, see that, that uh, you know, the world wasn't ending every time a movie fell apart, which is regularly, right? Yeah. Um, that's just, you know, movies fall apart and it's, it's quite heartbreaking. But I'm also, um, I've directed six films, I'm hopefully about to do my seventh, um, but I've written probably 50 scripts. I'm really a writer. Mm -hmm. And so writing is, is, is how, what I do, you know, with my time. And so, um, and that's, that's, uh, it's endless because I can always do it. You know, I don't need anyone's permission. I mean, right now I can't work on certain things, right. but I can still write. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so that's really what I do. Yeah. Maybe time for one more question. There's someone way in the back.
It's just our appreciation of your work, of what you do to yeah, help them. That was brand new, it's an original. It's beautiful. Um, and all you do to support writers, support actors, the work that you do in teaching students and, and helping them be the best that they can be. We appreciate you. We, we, you know, many of us look up to you and the work that you're, you're, you've done and look forward to the work that you're going to do. Um, and we're just happy that we can call you, you know, a native home filmmaker, person, wonderful, incredible. Thank you so much. Thank you. fabulous actors and I've worked with some fabulous crews, but I loved working in Boston. I loved it. I loved it. So we want, we want you to come back. As Nadine said, we want you to come back. It was amazing. Um, and they all want to work with you. So <laughs> but do not send your scripts. <laughs> thank you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.